Good morning, everybody. So today we got this uh, walk-in freezer running warm. Um, let's come in here. Lock myself in here for now. Uh, running 60 degrees. Uh, so this is how I do my troubleshooting, guys. Always check my coils first. This coil does not appear to have any ice on it. And number two, you check your fans. Both of your fans are running the proper rotation. And then I touch my liquid line. Liquid line does not appear to be uh, warm. Probably the condensing unit's not running. So, and for today, we're lucky enough to have our, our, our thermometer here, our thermostat. Let me go ahead and grab a uh, screwdriver we'll see if this is reading right and we'll check the contacts inside but this is how I usually start my troubleshooting guys just look at the coils look at your fans and then uh, your uh, thermostat right there will tell you if your condensing units running and right now it does not appear to be running so let's find out why all right guys we got our meter we got our uh, temperature right here we're just gonna check across the thermostat. And we have zero volts, which means that this is closed. So now, let's find out if that thermostat is uh, reading accurate. Right there, just clicked. We're at about 60. So it's just about right. There it is, clicked again. There it is. So this thermostat is good. There it is. Yep, it's gonna work. Let's put it at a uh, minus 10 right there. Let's continue on. All right guys, I came over here and hooked up to the suction side and we have about 105 PSI, which means this automatically tells me that the thermostat is calling and the solenoid valve is open, but we're not pulling down so it could be possible that the condensing unit is not on or the compressor is not pumping. So we'll go upstairs and find out. Hey guys, what would y'all do? Would y'all go on the roof? It just seems like a bad day to be up here. I'll probably just go over there, check it out real quick. I want to say something real quick before we get to our condensing unit I've never had a set of Keens but these things are amazing they don't slip like they got really good grip no they are not my sponsors I don't have absolutely any sponsors but man these are great absolutely great so all right guys so we have two condensing units right here because obviously we have a cooler and a freezer and they're not labeled. <clears throat> so I'm taking a kind of sort of an educated guess. And I'm gonna say that this is the cooler, the compressor, I don't see it rated for low temps. I know you can't see that very well, but I don't think the compressor is rated for low temp. And if you go over here, you notice that solenoid's being called for and the system is absolutely not running but if you look right there on the model number you have a z right there so i imagine this is going to be our freezer let's go ahead and start looking into it so, looks like we have a time clock up here it's not in defrost i do notice that we have our contactor pulled in so makes me think that this compressor is probably off on overload and let me see if I can see. So that fan might be on a pressure switch. So we're not building any pressure. We're not gonna have the fan running, but we do have a uh, pulled in contactor. So let's go ahead and check voltage. Let's see what's going on. So we've got our meter here. Let's go ahead and check our voltage. Incoming voltage, 215. 215 and 
one, one and three, 215. So let's go between one and two down here on the load side. Zero. So we probably got a bad contactor here. Let me see one and three, 218, and then two and three right here, 218. So there's something going on with this contactor right here in between one and two. I got zero volts. Um, see, that one's not making contact right here. So it's more than likely line two. See that? Shouldn't be happening. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up real quick. That's the contactor right there. Uh, I think we can see it's in pretty bad shape. I'm trying to see it's contacts right there. Um, yeah, it looks pretty bad, I'd say. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. I think I got one in the truck. So let's go ahead and change that out. Maybe this wire is not making good contact. So not yet it is. Let's see if I can show you real quick. Yeah, it's in there. There it is. All right, let's go ahead and uh, change this contactor. I'm just gonna tighten this up real quick. I wouldn't be surprised if this compressor starts right now, now that we've mess with it a little bit you know what i mean maybe we're gonna make some decent contact now but we're still gonna change it out we don't want this to be a problem later on there it goes compressor's running so yeah we got a bad contactor guys i'm gonna go ahead and go grab one from the van and uh come back and change it out What's going on? You all right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we got the uh, new contactor in. Um, so pretty much just go wire for wire. I ain't gonna show you guys how to do that, but I do wanna show you this. This is the uh, old contactor. See, it's in bad shape. I just. I just pried this off so let's go ahead and take a look at this look at the set of contacts they're all pretty pitted pretty bad um yeah right here as well so yeah definitely a bad contactor gents look at that you can tell where it's getting welded shut probably this thing started having issues a while back so yep so let's go ahead and uh, turn this baby on and see what happens all right guys moment of truth here there she goes so let's go ahead and uh, grunt like an old man and let's check our voltage so one and two, two eleven, two and three, two fourteen, and then one and three, two thirteen. Let's go on the load side. Two fourteen, one and three, two two fourteen, and then two and three, right there. 214 and we could even do the uh going across the same leg right there zero so yeah that other that other contractor was definitely bad zero zero so new contactor save the day 4.6 amps 5.2 5.2 so we're good to go all right guys we got everything buttoned back up and if you notice um, i put some brand new screws on here because the screws that were on here were all loose and this panel was about to fall off so put some brand new screws on there 
to make sure that everything's good to go we're the last ones out here so you own it let's go downstairs check the temperature and uh i'll get my buddy to check superheat real quick and uh, we'll call it a day all right guys we're at about five degrees um i got uh, we got the testo probes up there and uh we're still far away from set point but i just wanted to show you real quick we're running about 12 superheat however you you can't get an accurate superheat measurement until you're uh, probably at about negative five so we're 10 degrees off but this right here tells me that we're running good we're definitely gonna reach set point so we're gonna go ahead and call it a day guys just button everything back up and we'll be good to go thank you guys for watching we'll see you guys on the next call